Diogo Trigo and I'm fighting out of 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu London. I did a serious training camp trying to bring my cardio up and my strength and conditioning. So I want to put on a good show, be entertaining and hopefully get a win. Hi, my name is Callum Atkinson and I'm fighting out of Isle of Wight BJJ. Yeah, I am looking forward to tonight's fight. I haven't met my opponent before, but he seems like he's going to be a tough competitor and it's going to be a good fight. I'm not worried about anything. From the far side of the solar system to Portugal to London, Dr. Diogo Trigo, a PhD indeed, but also a brown belt in the 10th Planet Brazilian Jiu Jitsu system, comes here tonight to our big submission grappling tournament here at Apocalypse Fight Series. Dean, a lot to say about the 10th Planet guys. Very technical, very savvy, masters in the, in the unorthodox. You don't know what's gonna happen and you don't wanna leave your leg out there. So, we've got his opponent coming out. So, Callum Atkinson, 17 years old, from the Isle of Wight. A very interesting association there with Mill Hill BJJ on the Isle. Love this kid's mindset. Has not studied his opponent whatsoever, but is very confident in the background of his teammates. Over to Mr. Martin Wilder. We'll get this one underway. So as the fighters get to the middle, this one's very interesting to me, Dean, because we have four preliminary athletes. Only two will go on through this semifinal round. And they will have 10 minutes on the clock. And the rules are fairly simple. They have to try to tap each other more than the other person. The only way to win is via submission. And the only way to win is by the most submissions. So there will be no points, and the rule set will be basically brown belt IBJJF rules for those in the know. As far as what techniques are allowed and what are not. You can see here Diogo already eager to close the distance and get a hold of his opponent using that collar tie there. Do not be surprised if he jumps guard, Dean. That is technical 10th planet 101. Drago looking like, I was just about to say, he's, he's forcing his body weight and he's particularly his chest forward. It's like he wants to bait his opponent in Callum Atkinson in. Looks like maybe he will go for a flying submission or maybe even try to jump, jump guard and go for a leg. But let's see how it pans out now. Callum looking for a hip toss, but it wasn't there. And Diogo very proficient with a variety of techniques off his back. Callum, of course, I'm sure has seen some of the tape out there. The Dead Orchard is the one to watch out for. A really nasty triangle setup that Diogo favors off rubber guard. But again, look at that. Almost like a tie plum there to try to yank Atkinson in. But what you're seeing here, folks, is really the patience of submission only. Because they both know that once one of them taps the other, that's an automatic lead that can punch their ticket to the subsequent round. So. A little bit of a feeling out process. Atkinson latching onto a leg, and Trigo flops to the floor. Trigo looking to cinch up that half guard to grab a leg, but he doesn't get it. Atkinson now looking for the takedown. He wants to try and grab a leg, cinch a leg up, pull it off the ground, and push his opponent in Trigo off balance. You see here, he hooks that leg up, cuts the corner, Trigo off his back. Trigo controlling the back of the ankle. Trigo doing a good job there of trying to sneak a De La Hiva hook in. Atkinson goes for the neck. And he's trying to cup that chin there, Dean, to catch a hold in this front headlock position. Look at that, though. Trigo blocks the back take. Atkinson spins. And Trigo will try to bait him in and then open up the guard just like that. It's a game of cat and mouse of the highest consequences. Atkinson now back on his feet. He'll look to use the cage to get the takedown. What he needs to think about doing is start passing the legs. He can't leave Trago's legs out to be able to grab his. But I mean, now the best thing, way to explain, explain this situation here is if you imagine a crocodile in the, in the water and it wants to go undetected and then attack. It's exactly what's going on here. They don't want to give each other an inch to advance, they want to capitalize on a mistake or something that they initiate. And you mentioned the efficiency of guard passing when you take an opponent down. 
I think that's a skill that, particularly from Atkinson's perspective, could be one of the most important tactile decisions he makes in this fight. What you're seeing there, he's trying to force the legs of Trigo and control them. He doesn't really want to do anything in this uh, guard of the 10th Planet Practitioner. Trigo with the collar tie, sucking him in to try and catch a hold of something here, and he's locked up half guard. Atkinson now keeping heavy. No danger on the neck there. He's now sitting in half guard. Trigo on the bottom. What he'll try and do is try and get his feet on the inside of the legs and pull back to force Atkinson back down to his back. And Trigo thinking about that lumberjack technique. The sweep, an option there. Nice regard attempt from Trigo. Look at that. Atkinson nearly securing the pass. Trigo swivels his hips. And both fighters return to the upright. This has been an interesting match in some ways where the skill set of both athletes has canceled the others out. And on the flip side, the known strengths, the known dangers of each athlete causing some caution here. But it's been interesting nonetheless to see these little positional struggles here, just like that. Tiogo looking to possibly catch a De La Hiva sweep there, but yeah, stuff from Atkinson. Atkinson wants nothing to do with that. Atkinson very savvy to, ha to leg fight. He doesn't want to allow the legs to get cinched up. He does a good job of putting pressure on the ankles and looking for a pass. But with somebody like Trigo, it's very difficult to get past those legs. He's always moving, very agile. Flexibility is great. And time continues to run on here. I must say, I expected a more aggressive guard pull from Trigo. But he may be biding his time. You know, 10 minutes is a long time to work with. You've got to fight twice in a night. The last thing you want to do is do something over anxious and pay for it the rest of the evening. Atkinson now going, looking for the army and guillotine, turns into a sweep, now he's on top. He needs to pass his leg out of that position and step over to gain the leverage. Over halfway through this round, and Trigo having to protect his neck. Atkinson doing very good here to put his weight down and frame up his shoulder over the back of Trigo's neck. Trigo with the Granby roll. And again, getting the guard into play, a key strategy for him tonight. And what that does is make Atkinson have to deal with that set of problems and more importantly, disallow him from getting all the neck. Look at that, looking for the cartwheel pass. Atkinson dropping for a leg. Trigo gets it out of there. Straight ankle lock attempt from Atkinson and then Trigo counters with the takedown. Trigo able to get those double unhooks, optimum control, but Atkinson very savvy off his back now, sitting in the full guard. What he'll trying to do is break the posture down. He's got his arms over the top of the head of his opponent. And just about two thirds of the way through this fight, excellent stuff there, underhooking the leg for the sweep. Atkinson couldn't get the arm bar, but he escaped the position. Now Trigo thinking about setting up a leg lock. Atkinson out of there in a jiffy. Again, both fighters have done their homework, Dean. Atkinson very aware of the dangerous leg lock game of Trigo, and he explodes his leg out of that position. He turns to get it off the center line, out of danger, and then pulls out, pulls out of that position back to his feet. Very impressed with the way he's able just to pull the trigger when he feels a tiny bit of danger and reset. You'd only have to watch some of the tape of Jamie Scott there, head coach, and 10th Planet London, based out of the Diesel Gym, to realize those leg locks are uh, a favored technique in the den of killers. But I'm also seeing some of the things that a young up-and-coming guy in the Mill Hill team uh, would be known for in my eyes from Callum. He looks very well-rounded, looks very good in using his weight and technique, coupled with that weight distribution, just like that. What a beautiful sweep there. Excellent stuff from Atkinson there. He kept the balance of Trigo high, underhooked the leg and swept him over. Almost like a pendulum movement with his own leg. And now thinking about that Ezekiel choke, but Trigo tucking his chin, shrugs it off. And this is jiu-jitsu sometimes, folks. It's at a glacier's pace at times. And other times it's like hot lava. 
Atkinson now opting to, that's interesting, he had a dominant position there in the mount, he opted to, to skip up. I can tell you why, it was Trigo using that escape to get a hold of the legs. The way Trigo bucked up and thought about escaping and attacking one of those legs. Nice, hitting that Imanari roll. Trigo, certainly looking to uncork the flashy stuff. A response from Atkinson, nice. Excellent pass there from Atkinson. Using the Matador, the bullfighter pass. Right to the back take. Can Trigo escape? Atkinson now will look to try and take it to the mount, but Trigo senses that, turns in, and now he ends up in full guard. The see if he looks to pass the legs, to open the legs of Atkinson, and that will expose the leg. Atkinson looking for the sweep, turns it into a guillotine. Yeah, that's a great little counter there. Going hip bump sweep. Trigo puts his weight down, doesn't protect his neck. Atkinson thinks about a guillotine. He might be able to get this here, actually. This looks tight, Chris. Trigo is frantically trying to escape. Atkinson utilized those hooks to sweep Trigo over. And that was just definitely a strength difference. I feel like Trigo was able to just tuck his chin, catch some breathing room, roll out, hand fight in the process. He's been working very hard on his strength and conditioning in this camp, and I think that's showing right now, having powered out of a couple of these uh, front choke attempts from Atkinson. Atkinson displaying his own type of strength there. He forced the hips backwards of Trigo, so he couldn't roll. He couldn't do a forward roll there. I'd like to see him keep his hips down. Oh, he's going to turn it into a guillotine. Can't tell from my angle how tight that is, Dean, but he's definitely going for it, and it's the end of the round. 10 minutes on the clock, and we go to overtime. Well, you heard it there, folks, from Martin Wilde, our MC here tonight. We will be going into a series of exchanges. Both fighters being briefed on the rules. They will have a choice of positions, be assured control in those positions. And it seems that Callum Atkinson has won the draw and decided to take the back. Dean, he's got the seatbelt. Now, this is very interesting. Giving up your back is a no-no in jiu-jitsu, but in these rules, you have to. And Atkinson is going to have to be very quick. See if he starts to isolate the arms of Trigo and cinch up that rear naked choke and see what he's got. Now, Trigo, obviously, the onus is on him to escape as quickly as possible. And he's out. Whoa! That is huge. Trigo able to get out of there in seconds, Dean. And he's going to go for the back as well. All he has to do, really, at this point is outlast his opponent in maintaining this control. And Callum Atkinson is going to explode here. The moment the referee says go, Trigo may look to establish some control team before he attempts the submission. It will pay Trigo wisely to hold this position very tight. You see there, he's got that gable grip very tight, but He's shaken off the bat. Atkinson did a great job trying to get his arm out here. Right. And Atkinson escapes. Wow. Man, that was really close. I don't have the timer here in front of me, the official time. And folks, a noticeable element of tension here as we will have the official decision from our master of ceremonies, Mr. Martin Wilde. Thank you. 